Folks, today we're building this innovative double bottle bird feeder and it features this unique fast loading cartridge design. Not only that, we've included a free plan in the video description. So let's get started. So let's take a look at what we're building. The heart of the feeder is the cartridge bottle holders. Now they'll load about three or four times as fast as the funnel method used for traditional bottle feeders. The roof has a generous overhang, and believe it or not, our seed has stayed dry in this last several rainstorms. And you only need to lift the top for cleaning. It doesn't impede the cartridges loading in any way. And the seed area is designed to automatically drain water to the outside to these slots just in case water does get in there. There's a nice perch assembly on both sides. We'll also show you how to make a mounting bracket for either a wood post or a metal pole. And folks, if you enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate it if you would go below and click that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and click that notification bell. And I mentioned a plan in the video introduction. And it is a very simple plan and it's designed to support the video but it's in the form of a clickable link in the video description. We'll start with the bottom part of the feeder. Now be sure to refer to the PDF drawing in the video description, and that'll give you the correct sizes and the different components that you're gonna need. Now I bought a good straight piece of one by eight, and of course I had to dig through a stack of lumber at the building center to find one. But I'm going to cross cut all the pieces to the correct length now and the width of the feeder is actually seven and a quarter inch which coincidentally is the same width as a one by eight so we won't have to rip the sides and the bottom i did have to rip out a three inch wide piece for the back brace and a one and a half inch wide piece for the top brace so this is our middle divider and if you've looked at the diagram you know we need to cut a notch on the back for our back support and we're going to need to cut a notch here for our front support. So I laid out a three quarter by one and a half inch notch here and also a three quarter by three inch notch here. To make the cuts I used my saber saw but you could just as easily use a band saw or a table mounted jigsaw here if you wish. We'll start assembly by placing centering marks on the bottom piece and both ends of the center divider. Now we can start putting all of our pieces together. And when you have it all dry assembled, you need to mark the three-quarter inch setback for the top brace. Now we can clamp it together. And then mark center of both dividers. And clamp the divider securely in place. Now I'm keeping the joinery fairly simple for this project but I'm using a number eight countersink and I'm putting in a number eight by two inch screws and we're going to putty over and sand these holes later in the video and of course you want to make sure that all of your joints are supported by screws before you remove the clamps Next we'll cut the bottle cartridge hangers and there will be eight of these. I use some of my scrap wood here and I ripped it on the table saw to three quarter by three quarters of an inch. Now we simply go back to our feeder and position them like so and mark them for an exact length. And when you go to your saw, be sure to cut them maybe a sixteenth of an inch shorter uh, than your mark for better fitting. This way we can be sure that the cartridges won't stand proud of the bird feeder when we install them. Now come in about a half inch and drill both ends with a number six countersink. I've cut two measuring sticks here. Now this one is 10 and 3 quarters inches long and that will mark the top part of our stick here. So it will be positioned like this. Okay. Now this one is 11 and a little less than 5 8 inches long and it will define the bottom position of the top rung like so. 
So we'll use our sticks and make our marks on both sides and the middle divider as well. And once that's done, we can install our supports. And I'm using number six by one and a quarter range bugle head screws here. And now we're done. Most two liter soda bottles will have lines around the circumference and you can actually use those as your cutting guide. Now if it doesn't have lines, measure up about two inches and you can use a marks a lot. Use your stick or a couple of boards and then just spin your bottle and it gets you started with a line. That's pretty close. And of course mark all the way around the bottle. And I'll make the cut with a utility knife. Okay, there we go. Now this is what it'll look like when we're done. I cut this earlier. And you can see how this fits. Right here. We want about an inch and a half of clearance here below the bottle. And when you get the bottle in there, when you put your seeds in it, you can just take the cap off. They'll spill out into your tray. So now we need to build this part. Now I can get two holders out of this one piece of board. So let's take our combo square and lay out our board 7 and 7 eighths inches long. And then we can move to the other end of the board and repeat. Now we can readjust the square for 5 and 5 eighths inches and make our mark where we're going to rip it. First the table saw. I'll adjust it and make the rip. And then we'll make our cross cuts on the miter saw. And let's test fit. All right, and that looks pretty much perfect. You want to have a little slack. A little slack up and down, a little, a little slack side to side. So it'll slide in easy. So now we've got our pieces cut. But we're going to have to drill this hole, okay, here. Now to do that, we're going to need to center here, or to find center of the board. So I'll just, I'll just draw corner to corner. And before we cut the hole, there's one more thing I want to do. I want to bevel this a little bit on each side, so that when we insert it, it'll just make it going easy. It won't bind up like this. I set my miter saw at 45 degrees and I bobbed off both corners about a quarter of an inch. So now let's lay out our holes. Now I measured the bottle diameter at about four and one eighths of an inch. I took the zero center ruler and I marked the radius at two and sixteenths of an inch. And then I used a school compass and drew the four and one eighths inch circle. Now I'm going to use a spade bit and cut a half inch starter hole. I'm going to be using the jigsaw and I want to cut just inside the circle line. I'm using my oscillating sander now and I can use this to sand to the line, get it good and round. You could also use a drum sander on your drill press or your electric drill. Next, let's test fit our bottles and make sure they actually fit. Now both of my bottles fit just fine. But actually, before we permanently attach these, there's one more step we have to take. So now, this is my fronts right here. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this to fit and attach it to the front. And I want this piece to be the exact same width as this piece. I used the bottle holder to accurately set the stop on the saw. This will ensure that the drawer front is the exact same width as the holder. And now we can just go ahead and cut our boards to length. I'll be attaching the fronts with pocket hole screws, so I'm going to put them together like so, and I'm going to mark the location for the screws about an inch in from the edge. And I've set my equipment up to make a hole for a one and one quarter inch of pocket hole screw. And now we're ready to attach the fronts. 
And what I want to do first is take a straight edge, or, or actually a straight piece of board, and put it across the top over the drawer cavity, as shown. And we'll clamp that in place, and that'll give us a guide to position the top of our drawers. We're going to use double-sided tape to position and temporarily attach the fronts to the holder. But make sure it's firmly attached before removing the paper cover layer. Now you can insert the blank into the holder and make sure the pocket hole screws are on the downside. Now you can carefully position the front and push it up against the top piece and make sure you leave kind of even spacing on each side. And be sure to press it firmly into the tape. Now I'm going to clamp the two pieces firmly together before I try to put in the pocket hole screws. So now you can run in your screws and remove your clamps and then we'll try it out for fit. So now a test fit and it looks pretty good. Now that the fronts are attached, I've gone ahead and slipped our bottle back in there and you can see how they'll fit. But before we attach anything permanently, we need to do some painting. Now there's a good reason for that. And the logic here is this. I have this as a dome board, or it's actually got a crown on it. In other words, the bottom is dish and the top's got a little dome or rise to it. And that way the water will migrate to the outside here if water should get into it. What I want to do before I attach these is put a series of stainless steel washers behind this, creating a slot here uh, large enough for water to, to, to migrate out of the box but not big enough that all the seeds will fall through. But to do that, all of these surfaces need to be painted front and back. Otherwise, you have just created another rot situation. First, I use denatured alcohol to remove all of the pencil marks. I use stain blocking primer on the knot holes. I putted the screw holes and sanded everything. I painted everything with three coats of exterior acrylic semi-gloss enamel. Now be sure to coat all four sides of the seed retainers with three coats of paint. Now it's time to permanently attach the bottles to the cartridge holders. And I'm using a two-part clear epoxy compound here. And I'm spreading it on the inside rim of the holder. Now try for a thin, even coat. Now you can carefully insert your bottle. And be sure that you insert it on the bottom side. And we'll let it dry for a few hours. But first, use a level before it sets up and make sure the bottle will dry up in the 90 degree vertical position. Next, I drill six evenly spaced holes around the perimeter of the bottle. And I install uh, number six by three quarter inch dome head screws. So next, we can try them out. And I think we have a pretty good fit. Next, clamp the seed retainers in place flush with the sides and the bottom. Now I'm going to use the number six countersink again here. And I'm going to screw two holes at each side of the cabinet and then two in the very middle. Now after you remove the clamps, we're going to run the screws in until the points stick through the bottom a bit. And then we're going to install two number 10 stainless steel washers on each one. Now carefully line up the screw tips with your screw holes. And I say carefully because if you're not careful, the washers will fall off. <laughs> and now go ahead and screw them in. And when you're done, you should have this slot between the seed retainer and the feeder. And of course, we'll need to putty those screw holes. Well now, we've already finished the bottom pretty much, so now let's move on to the top. And I've cut a sample piece here just to test uh, the roof angles. And I think this is going to work really well. I think I'm going to make it just a little bit longer though because I want a nice overhang to protect the seed cavity here, keep it dry. So now I'm cutting this out of a piece of 1x8. What I'm going to try to do is get two overlapping. One here, turn this upside down, imagine, and there'll be one here. Now I've cut a square edge here. And we're going to make the new ones 18 inches long. So I'll set my square at 9 inches, and I'll draw the center line. I next set it for 5 and a half inches, and we'll draw the height. 
So now we can draw one inch from the bottom. And this will be for the center positioning block. I went and got a longer ruler and I marked the length at 18 inches. And finally I measured up one inch on each end and this is where the slope will terminate. So now I'm going to take the yardstick and I'm going to draw the slope on both sides starting at our apex five and a half inch mark and down to the one inch mark on each side. And to make the cut I used my saber saw and I tried to have my blade just touch the line. If you cut into your finished cable area, you won't be able to sand it out. And after the sawing was done, I went ahead and sanded it down to the line. And then I can go ahead and use this one as a pattern for the second one. And I do that just by laying it on the board and just marking around it. And when that's done, we can go ahead and cut the second one. And don't forget on your second gable end to go ahead and measure up that one inch for your positioning block line. Here's our finished roof ends. And we've got our marks on here for positioning and these are just little positioning blocks I made these off camera three quarter by three quarter inch uh, by about four inches long and I've already cut countersunk here and I'm using one inch screws and what I want and I found the center and I want to put that right at this intersection mark right here and I want it to be right on this line and what these do is just position the end while we attach the other roofing members. You can actually take these off later. There we go. Now you'll notice here that I've made a mark at center on each end. So when I set this up here, I can center that right there. And that's absolute center of my roof line, which is where we want it. And the positioning block also maintains this inch and a half overhang here that we want. So here we go, and I'm going to do the same thing here. And now we're ready to start measuring for and cutting our cross pieces. There'll be three, one here, one here, and one in the middle. If we check the plan, we see that these three pieces are cut to 18 and 3 quarters of an inch long. So that's what I'm going to set my stop for. Now I'm going to cut a square and cut on the end of my 1x8 and we'll move it down and make our final cut. The top of all three roof supports must be ripped with an angle to match the slope of the end piece. And to compute that angle, all we have to do is stand up the roof end on a flat surface and I'm using a piece of straight square cut scrap here and I'm going to simply butt it up against the end and mark the angle. Then you can use your bevel gauge and lock that angle in. We'll now take our bevel gauge and use it to set the angle on our table saw blade. I set the fence for the outside supports first and I want to set it so that uh, when I cut it I'm just barely getting a full angle cut. They're three and a half inches wide so there's not much material to waste. Now we want to reset the fence so that we can cut the upper middle support. Now this is trickier. I'm going to set the fence so that we'll be just cutting the top half of the board. So you'll have the angle cut only halfway. Then we'll rip it and flip it over and we'll be able to cut the bottom half. So you'll have a little steeple effect when you're done. So now we can start assembling the roof. And what I've done here is I've taken my clamps and I've clamped the center member in place loosely. I want it to be loose enough that I can position it and flush it up. Okay, then I'm going to tighten my clamps. Now I'm countersinking holes for a number six by one and a half inch screw. And then we can run them in. I'm going to take a guard stick here and I'm going to draw a vertical line that will define the outside edge of the outside board. Okay, for this step I've removed the clamps and I want to be sure to position it and make sure uh, the assembly center and then we're going to test fit our outside supports and they're just a little bit long so I'm going to mark them here and I think I'm about a saw curve out so back to the table saw again and we'll rip each piece in our line so we're going to clamp it back together and we're going to test for a flush fit and assuming that we have one we'll go ahead and install the rest of the screws 
I designed this pivoting system using galvanized slide latches and man it worked great. Unfortunately I also made a design change to the roof assembly so that I could raise it another half inch for bottle clearance. And now these things won't work. So I removed them. However you will still see them in video scenes. It's just too late to reshoot everything. So just remember we won't be using them. And now I pause and putty and sand. So now let's look at roof treatments. We need to put a roof on this baby next. Now what I'm going to do is use cement board. Uh, cement board is absolutely impervious to water and I have a bunch of this left over from a job. So this is what I'm going to do. You may not want to do this because it's just hard on your saw blades and tools. But it will make a perfect roof. Now if you don't want to use the hardy plank, and I wouldn't blame you, just remember that the technique and the measurements are exactly the same if you wanted to use, say, solid wood or plywood. So I want to make sure to remove my good blades from my saw. And what I do is I save my old dull blades to cut the hardy plank with. Because if you don't have a dull blade when you start cutting hardy plank, you sure will when you're finished. It's death on saw blades. Now each panel for the roof will be 22 inches long and 11 inches wide. That will allow for a one inch overhang all the way around. I went ahead and ripped the cement board to a little over 11 inches. We'll cut to exact width when we cut the bevel. I drew this vertical line with my combo square. Then I used it as a reference line to match the roof angle with the bevel square. And of course we'll lock that in and then head for the table saw. And if you measure and cut your bevel right, your roof should meet like this. So we adjust the blade angle and reset the fence slightly uh, to cut the bevel. One thing you'll be sure to notice is how much dust it makes when you cut concrete board. So be sure to wear your respirator. And if possible, work in a well ventilated area. So we can test fit the top. So we're going to measure and draw lines where our roof members go. And that's where we're going to put our fasteners. Now you can see I added some construction cement. And I'm going to use my brag gun to attach it. I also put paintable acrylic caulk in the roof joint. Now we can finish nailing it and we're ready to go. I put in the nail holes and let that dry. So now we'll put three coats of exterior enamel on the entire top assembly. Now as we mentioned earlier in the video, we're going to be putting this on a pole in our backyard. If you're going to mount it on a metal pole up to two inches wide, uh, you can take two three and a half by three and a half pieces of two by four. You want to find center on one of them, add wood glue, and then either use clamps or weights to secure them. Then you can drill out the hole with the appropriate size drill bit. Now I'm using a one and three eighths inch spade bit. When the tip pokes through the bottom, I'm going to turn it over and finish drilling. Now this eliminates tear out. And I tested it on my spare pole and it's a good fit. Then I took a number eight countersink and I went around the board alternating between the top 2x4 and the bottom 2x4 and I drilled my mounting holes. Next I centered it on the bottom, applied construction cement and used the weight. When that was dry, I drilled and sank uh, four number 8 by 2 inch dome head screws with washers to permanently secure it in place. And I didn't use stainless steel screws here in washers, so I'm going to have to paint these heads to protect them from the weather. So then I turned it over and just made sure that none of the screws were inside the hole. And now I'm going to paint it. Next we're going to add a perch assembly for our feathered friends to sit on. And if you look at the plan, these are parts M and N. I cut two each, three quarter by one and a half by 12 inch pieces to support the three quarter inch dowel rods. And I was able to buy just one four foot long dowel rod, which will be enough for both sides. And I want to mark the middle point of the bird feeder. And I also want to mark the middle point of the one by two. So that they'll match like so. We're going to drill a hole three quarters of an inch wide and a half inch deep on each end of the board. These holes need to be centered three quarter inches in from the end of the board. And of course I'm going to mark that intersection with my combo square. I've chucked up a three quarter inch rad point drill bit 
and we want to adjust the drill press so that it will cut the deepest hole possible without the point going all the way through to the bottom side of the board. And after a visual check, we can drill our holes. So when our holes are drilled, we can go ahead and start assembling the perch. Now we're going to assemble one side only first. And we can also start drilling our holes now. And we're going to put number six by one and a quarter range screws on each side. And before taking the clamps off, I'm going to run my screws in. We want to make sure that this side is firmly attached before we move to the other side. Now move to the other side and position and clamp the other support in place. However, we don't want to actually attach it right now. First, we're going to use story sticks and insert each stick all the way into the hole on both sides and clamp them in place. Now remove the support. Here I use them to mark the rod to the correct length and then I just took the rod over to my miter saw and I used it to set the stop. And I subtract about an eighth of an inch from the length to make it easier to fit up. And now you can cut both sticks. And you may need to sand the ends to get them to fit in the socket. Then I put a little yellow groove in each socket and inserted the rods. And I still had to use a mallet to get them to completely seat. Now I centered the end support and clamped it in place. And again, I had to use the mallet to make it seat all the way against the side of the feeder. Now you can countersink it and run in your screws. And then remove your clamps. Next, I puttied, sanded, and painted the unfinished parts. Now that the bottom unit is complete, I'm going to attach the top. And I'm going to use two inch leaf hinges. Uh, if you're a seasoned woodworker, you may want to cut mortises for your hinges, but I'm going to keep it really simple and forgo that. Now I've applied painter's tape where the hinges go, and that way we can see our measuring marks. I'm going to make a mark at one and a half inch on each side, and then I'll measure and mark center. Make sure the outside edge of the hinge is flush against your board's edge. Next, you can drill your starter holes and then remove the tape and install the hinge. Now repeat that process for the other two hinges. I've had these hinges in my hardware drawer for years and they have adjustment slots, which is really handy for what we're doing here. Now I can't find replacements anywhere, either online or in the store, so please, if you know where to get these hinges, comment and let me know. Now we can attach it to the bottom unit. And this is pretty much a repeat of what we've just did. Again, make sure that the outside edge of each hinge is flush with the back brace. If they're not, it'll be hard to fit. It's going to hang up when you try to close it. And I like to start with the center hinge. And here you can see the adjustment slots come in handy uh, for fitting this because I got it just a little off. So now we can close it and test our fit. And it looks like a good one. Now we can drill out and install the other hinge screws. Now the little latch and the turn screw you see hanging there were installed before I redesigned the top. So just forget you saw those and I'll show you how to do them next. So now we're done with our hinges so we're ready to move on. Now the last thing we have to do before mounting it on our pole is to install some hardware. And this is real simple hardware and that's mainly to secure the top and the cartridges. We'll install the turn button first. And you can see in this middle section here where I'm working that I've really kind of buggered all this up. And what I was trying to do here is install a latch in this location. I found out with the latch installed, you couldn't open the drawers. So I had to move the latch location, but we are going to put the turn button here. And you'll need to center it right in the middle between the two drawers. In addition to the button, you'll need a flat washer and a one and a half inch number eight bugle head screw. Be sure you put that washer behind it. It won't work well without it. I installed a two and a half inch spring latch on the side and it worked real well in this location. The great thing about this type of latch is that it locks everything in place. Now I'm installing the latch first and when that's done I went ahead and fitted the matching eye bolt on the side. 
And now you can see how it works. I'm going to start number eight by two and a half inch deck screws and the mounting block before we install it. Now unfortunately when I did a test fit outside, I discovered that it's too heavy for the flimsy pole I have, so I'm going to have to mount it on a post, I think. And I do have a wooden post to put it on. I built this straddle type post bracket and it worked very well. Now you can see here how it's put together. I first cut the base plate to fit my three and a half inch by three and a half inch post and cut two side pieces. Now the measurements will be displayed on the screen. Of course, you'll need to adjust these measurements if you have a different size post. And I cut a 15 degree bevel on each side with my miter saw. So I assembled the bracket and got everything centered, clamped it in place, and then countersunk and run in number eight by two inch deck screws. Three screws to each side. Next, I laid out four mounting holes in the base, about half to three quarter inch in from the corner, and I countersunk them. So I painted the bracket and then I laid out measurement lines on the top to center it. And also to make sure that it's parallel to the side. And attached it with number eight by one and a quarter inch screws. And finally we need to countersink and install four number eight by two and a half inch deck screws to actually attach it to the post. So now we can bring it outside and we can put it on our post. And I've got a really good fit here, and uh, all I need to do now is center it. And we build it sturdy so we can bang around on it. And I'm going to take my level, and we're going to get it good and level, and then we'll start screwing in our screws. I found it easiest to raise the low end and sink that screw first. Now we can move our level to the side, and then when we get that right, we can go ahead and put in the rest of the screws. Then all we have left to do is touch up our mounting screws with a little paint. My better half was anxious to get the seed in the feeder, so she first loaded the cartridges with two different kinds of seeds, by the way, and then slipped them into the feeder, removes the bottle caps, and the seed spills out and fills the bottom. And that's all there is to it. Now all we need is birds, and I hope we find some that are smarter than this one. Now he's five foot for more seeds than he can eat in a week. And yet he's returned to the old feeder and he's pecking in an empty bowl. There's nothing here but empty peanut holes that the squirrels left. I guess he's a creature of habit. Anyway folks, that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching.